Trusting too much in your cruise might result in a problem later on, so today I've got a list of more things you shouldn't trust on your Royal Caribbean cruise up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Not too long ago, we did a video about the things you absolutely cannot trust on your Royal Caribbean cruise. And while that list was the initial ideas I came up with, you all came up with a bunch of other ideas that really got me thinking about other things you shouldn't trust. When I talk about this, what I'm really referring to are things you should verify and not assume or totally rely on without verifying before you get on board a cruise. When it comes to a cruise experience, the more research and preparation you make, the better the cruise experience is overall. And after our last video that we talked about things not to trust on your Royal Caribbean cruise, like double checking that everything in your state works correctly or that your shore excursion will return you back to the ship on time. And all of you came up with some even better ideas, things I hadn't considered. And also I actually went on then Liberty of the Seas and more of these ideas came to me. So I've got a list of five more things not to trust on your Royal Caribbean cruise, starting with number one, refunds before you get off the ship. This is a very common tale in which I'll see somebody who responds about that they went on a cruise and had a problem. Maybe there was something that didn't work out correctly. Maybe there's a short excursion that was canceled or more likely something didn't work the way they expected it to. And Royal Caribbean said they would refund them some portion of their cost, whether it is like a percentage of their cabin cost or the short excursion cost, whatever. They're promised a refund. And the issue is people don't follow up with this and just assume, well, the money's going to come to them. And then they get home and realize, well, that didn't happen. So one of the most important things you can do is before you get off the ship, verify anything you're expecting. Onboard credit, refunds, whatever. That money has been returned to you before you get off the ship. This is critically important. The way that Royal Caribbean works is they have an onboard team and a shore side team. And when it comes to promises made on board the ship, it is much better to have those things verified and fulfilled while on board the ship. One of the common mistakes with this is people get off the ship without doing that. And then there's a big disconnect in communication between shoreside and the ship. And this is so much easier if you're talking to the people who made the promise in the first place on board the ship. So if you're ever expecting a refund and somebody tells you, hey, don't worry, it'll be there before the end of the cruise. Well, make sure it's actually there before the end of the cruise. Don't get off the ship without feeling 100% certain that you've either gotten the refund or there's no doubt in your mind it's getting there. In some cases, there'll be a promise of like a future cruise credit. This occurs maybe something is wrong with your cabin functionally and Royal Caribbean wants to make up the difference for you. In that situation, you're not going to get it while on board the ship. But the most important thing is get something in writing. So that way, if you do need to go back with Royal Caribbean after the cruise, at least you have proof of it, not word of mouth. Number two. What is supposed to be in your cabin? So I talked in the last video about things that should be working in your cabin, but what about things that actually should be in your cabin? So never trust the things that you expect to be in there will actually be there. What I'm really talking about are special requests. If you want to have a crib in there, CPAP machine hookup and other special things like a sharps container, these are things that you can certainly request before the cruise and should, but don't assume, never trust that it will be there. There's plenty of times when our kids were younger when we would request a crib and I would tell my travel agent, please put it on the reservation. And I would say maybe half the time it would actually be there. So never trust that it will actually be there, but always double check for it when you get on board. And if it's not there, talk to your stateroom attendant about that. Now on embarkation day, especially when you first get in your cabin, your stateroom attendant may not be there exactly when you get on board. They'll usually come out later in the afternoon. Not to worry. You can always pick up the phone and call the housekeeping line. There's usually a shortcut on your phone to call them and they can hook you up with that and usually bring it to you right away. If you're taking a cruise to the Caribbean or even Alaska, never trust the weather forecast. My goodness, a lot of people get themselves really worked up about the weather forecast. But the reason why you can't trust the weather forecast is that they're notoriously inaccurate. So in the Caribbean, it's going to rain every day. But that doesn't mean it's going to be a soaker. Like when you pull up a forecast for Cozumel or somewhere else in the tropics, probably it's going to be like 85 degrees and rainy will be the forecast. And you're going to think, oh man, our entire cruise vacation is going to be rained out. No. In the tropics, during the wet season, which is the summer, you're going to have daily thunderstorms. They could be five minutes, they could be half an hour, but they're rarely an all-day event, and they usually roll through quite quickly. In some cases, it may not actually rain on you at all. But basically, because the weather forecasting is so inaccurate because of these pop-up thunderstorms that occur, they just kind of do this like, well, 
50% chance of rain, which basically is like saying you got a 50-50 shot at it being rained on you, which is pretty much like any day, right? So the Caribbean especially, it's probably going to rain, but it'll be short-lived. Don't change your plans as a result of it. Similarly, in Alaska, boy, their weather is even more crazy than in the Caribbean. In any Alaska cruise you're going to be taking, you should expect it to be like cloudy and rainy in the morning, sunny, and then cold, and then rainy again, and then sunny again. The weather changes all the time. That's why one of the most important mantras about an Alaska cruise for packing is to go with layers. When you're on an Alaska cruise, you should always leave the ship wearing a base layer, like a t-shirt and a pair of jeans, and then a warm layer, like a fleece, and then on top of that, you have a waterproof layer, like a waterproof jacket. That way, when it does rain on you, you put the jacket on, you're good to go, and when it gets a little sunnier out, you can take that off, heck, you can take the fleece off, and obviously add back layers as you see fit. The bottom line is, whether you're talking about Alaska or the Caribbean, it is likely going to rain at some point in the day, but it isn't always going to be an all-day soaker. Moreover, don't trust the weather forecasting in a lot of these places, especially the Caribbean, because weather forecasting in general in the Caribbean is not nearly as accurate as it is in the U.S. That's largely due to the fact there are far less radar stations in the Caribbean than you find in the United States. So for those reasons, weather forecasts are best for maybe temperature predictions, but beyond that, you can pretty much ignore them. Number four on our list is when your luggage will be delivered to your cabin. So this is a really important one. When you give your porters your luggage on embarkation day in the cruise terminal, they're going to deliver it to your room. And Royal Caribbean will give you a rough estimate that it'll be there sometime in the afternoon, but it can obviously take a lot of time. There's a lot of luggage they're trying to load on there. And depending on a variety of factors that no one can really predict accurately, it might take longer for your luggage to be there. So this is important not only for like time management, but also making sure anything you absolutely need is with you on your carry-on bag. So anything you absolutely critically need between boarding and I would say at least dinner time on your ship, you should be bringing in your carry-on luggage. This includes medications, electronics, even a change of clothes, maybe for dinner if you'd like to, including a bathing suit, would be things you want to bring in your carry-on luggage. Everything else that you don't really need in the first six hours or so you're on board the ship, that can be waiting in your checked luggage, of course. But it's critically important to understand that when you give those bags, they may arrive in your cabin an hour or two later, or it may not be till much later on. In fact, if you end up putting something in your checked luggage that you shouldn't be putting in there, like an iron or alcohol, well, your bag's going to be flagged and held back, and you're going to take some time later for you to have to go down there and get it. So... Most importantly, make sure that you put the most important things with you when you board the ship and never trust that your luggage will be delivered on time. And the last thing you shouldn't trust on your Royal Caribbean cruise is the final bill. So never walk off your Royal Caribbean cruise ship without verifying that the charges are accurate. It's a really good idea in that last day to go verify everything looks correctly. It's really easy to do this. Just pull up the Royal Caribbean app, go to your billing section, you can actually see all the charges you've made during your cruise. And sometimes there are mistakes. A classic example of this is you have a drink package. And for whatever reason, the bartender charged you for the drink instead of obviously covering it with the drink package. That's something you can remove on there. Another classic example might be something that erroneously has been charged to you. There have been situations in which somebody, you know, tells the person, whatever it is, spa attendant, the bartender, the restaurant, oh, I'm in cabin so-and-so. And maybe they mistype the room number or something like that. But there have been times in which there are erroneous charges on your bill. So you want to verify that everything that you're expecting is on the bill and nothing else. And on top of that, going back to the first thing we talked about, which is refunds, again, making sure where their onboard credits you were supposed to get at the beginning of the cruise. Make sure those are there. If there are any discrepancies, you should go down to guest services and they can help you out. Now, if you're staying in a suite, definitely go to the suite concierge. They can help you out because not only will they make it easier for you, it'll also be a shorter line for that. So there you have it, a list of five other things you should not trust on your Royal Caribbean cruise. You know, when it comes to the cruise experience in general, I think you'll be fine, but these are things that you should really double check and re-verify and never assume they'll be with you on board. With that being said, let me know in the comments if we missed anything else you shouldn't trust on your Royal Caribbean cruise. Let me know in the comments below. While you're below our video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Talk again real soon.